Hi, this is Dr. Kate, and today I'm going to do a podcast on stretching. So lots of my patients um, think that stretching is super beneficial and something that they should be doing a lot of. And if you see the exercises that I post on social media and on YouTube, a lot of them are not just static stretching and there's a reason for that and you know the exercises I give out to patients aren't typically just static stretching um and I thought this was a great time to do it I did a few podcasts on my own hip injury and a big component of that was static stretching and pushing my joint through um that normal range of motion for the sport or, you know, activity that I was doing. And I just wanted to give you some more up-to-date research on what stretching actually does and what the different kinds of stretching are, because there are different kinds of stretching. So typically we have three different types and the kind most people think of when they think of stretching are static stretching. So static stretching is where you just get into a stretch and hold it for however long. Um, Typically people tend to think that they should do static stretching before they do an activity like um, their sport or running or something like that. And they do it cold. And I don't know about all gyms, but Um, our local YMCA is very, very air conditioned. So a very artificially cold. Um, I used to be on the board there and I lobbied for having much less air conditioning and trying to keep it warm, um, because that helps prevent injuries, but there were no takers on that. People apparently don't like to sweat, but that's a whole different, um, issue, Um, so you definitely don't want to do it when your temperature is cold, but you also don't want to do it before you do an activity. You want to warm up or do your activity and then stretch. Um, so static stretching is that holding of something forever. Um, and I danced forever and we had whole classes on stretching. We would stretch and sit in, um, splits and all sorts of things for just minutes and minutes and minutes um, and have someone pushing on us or um, like pressing. So if that is what the kind of stretching you do where you're, you're bouncing into something to trying to get further, that would be called ballistic. So I think B and B ballistic has, you know, some bounce or overpressure into it. So if you're in gymnastics or dance or cheerleading or something like that, don't let someone press on you um, because that is definitely something that encourages injury. Um, <clears throat> now with static stretching, some of the most current um, papers that have come out and that kind of thing show us that there are no benefits to static stretching beyond 15 seconds. So that's even shorter than I had once thought. So that's very interesting is that, you know, you don't need to hold something for over 15 seconds because it really loses its benefit for the tissue. Um, the third kind of stretching would be dynamic stretching. And this is where we get all of the good benefits. And you'll see mostly my videos um, for that for social media and stuff or have a dynamic component to it. Um, Now, what is dynamic stretching? Uh, There are lots of different types and usually it is uh, an active kind of a stretch. We've got PNF stretching, which is proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation. We have PFS, which is post-facilitation stretch, and that was um, developed by Vladimir Yonda. We have PIR, <clears throat> which is post-isometric relaxation, and that was by developed by Carl Lewitt. Um, and that, the difference between PNF, which 
if you're if done sports or that kind of thing, you might have, have be familiar with PNF. So like if you're stretching your hamstring, you'd be possibly lying on your back. You'd have your leg up in the air. Somebody would be standing beside it. And then you're going to push 100% of your effort into that person, contracting the hamstring. And then when you relax, they uh, push on it and help um, stretch past that range of motion that, that you have. Um, now, PIR, which is developed by Lewitt, um, is less of a contraction than PNF. So think of it as less intense than that 100% contraction of PNF stretching. Um, basically, the theory be behind PIR is that you're just going to shorten the tissue before you lengthen it and you would be doing reps. So you're not holding it in one position. You're shortening, then lengthening, then shortening, then lengthening. And that's more what, what the exercises I sh show on um, social media is. Um, now the research that shortening and lengthening the muscle can help to decrease the tonicity or tension of a trigger point. So like, you know, if you have a big trigger point in your trap, um, sometimes instead of um, just holding that stretch forever and trying to get it to release, using uh, or rubbing it out with trigger point work or that kind of thing, doesn't do as good of a job as just simply shortening and lengthening that muscle um, for a certain amount of reps, because that um, helps with the, the how the brain views that area, and that's really what creates the tonicity in the muscle. It's um, got so much more of a neuro basis behind it, <clears throat> and I think people are conditioned into wanting their therapists, and you know whether it be PT or chiropractor or massage therapist to uh, really dig in and rub the heck out of the muscle. And really that's missing a key component. And that's why we really try to hammer home the fact that you need to do these exercises, whether it be dynamic stretching, PIR, that kind of thing, because it could be, that could be just um, how it manifests in a physical symptom, but you know, what is the underlying reason why you're having that trigger point? So um, exercises, we say it time and time again, but exercises are key in creating sustained change rather than putting that Band-Aid on there that helps you feel good just for a little bit. Um, now, another thing with the, I forgot to say with the Static stretching is that if you're a running or jumping athlete, so that means any sport that involves those things, um, static stretching should not be really used unless they're rehabbing a muscle tear. When you have a muscle tear, you get, you know, scar tissue comes down and your muscle fibers or spindles should line up staggered, you know, coming together like this. And when we're stretching, if those pieces are not in place, that static stretching helps to pull and then they can kind of fall into place and then come back together lined up better. So static stretching does have its place when you're rehabbing uh, a muscle tear. But other than that, if you're not rehabbing something like that and not doing it past 15 seconds, <clears throat> you're you're way better off doing the dynamic stretches and doing them after you have warmed up. You definitely have to be warm before we try those kind of things. Um, and I, another thing I would ask, like put out there to you is why do you want to stretch? Is it that you're um, trying to increase your range of motion or what do you what do you need that increased range of motion for? Because it's not just generically better. And for my hip, it was worse for it and created injury by going past that range of motion through my stretching in my dancing. 
it actually um, put too much onto the joint and caused an injury. So what is your goal with increasing your range of motion? Is there something specific that you need to um, gain access to by having an increased range of motion? Those are important things to think about because we're kind of trained to think more flexibility is better when really that's not the case. It's like unschooling yourself to not think that way and think, what exactly do I need this increased range of motion for? Um, Because when we do static stretching, um, it actually decreases our muscle tension um, and you lose strength benefits. Um, so if you're doing static stretching before you are going to a track meet and wanting to sprint and go fast, that is not, you're going to do the opposite of what you want. So that static stretching right before you try to do your sport or activity is actually going to work against you and give you less strength benefit. So if you want to maintain the strength benefit or keep your strength and, do stretching, then you should do dynamic stretches, um, especially before you're about to compete with something. But again, that knowing why you want that increased range of motion, how it's going to help you functionally is, is a good thing to kind of think of to see what kind of stretching do you need to do to get that? Is it necessary? And is it going to be safe for your joint? So all things to think about because flexibility by itself is not um, great for your joints. You want to be able to control it with strength and that really gives you that proper mobility and you want to make sure it's a healthy place for your joint to be in. So that is something that I would love to, you know, put out there to the gymnasts and the dancers and the yogis and all those kind of things that I love is that how do we keep it safe and healthy for the joint and work in that mid range of motion and make that more um, of a helpful strength building place to allow you to do the things that you want to. So if you have any question about stretching, let me know um, or the different types because they all do pretty different things.